I ain't giving you my secret sauce now. JT's barbecue. You are gonna give me that sauce shack. at the Bone Shack. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to Crosscut. I'm your co-host Chris, and I'm your other co-host Josh. So, as per last episode, we were doing the Robert Rodriguez Film School, right? It's part one, just so everyone knows. It was part one. There's three parts to this. And in the spirit of Robert Rodriguez, I decided let's go with a Robert Rodriguez film. And why not Grindhouse? One of the classics. We went with Planet Terror. Well, if you're going to go with Robert Rodriguez and Grindhouse, you can only go with Planet Terror because it's the only one he did. <laughs> I, know. I know. But it's still part of Grindhouse. So. Yes. yes. So, still I'm, I'm still, still correct. That's still correct. I think I've only seen Planet Terror probably once or twice because I could not remember anything of this movie. I remember like snippets here and there, you know, definitely her 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 gun and everything like that. Uh, and at the very end, I, I, the one thing I remembered about it was the, the mini gun. But... <laughs> And snippets here and there. And I was like, I do not remember this part in the movie at all. It's awesome. <laughs> the explosions, the, the 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 cheesy lines, the just JT himself with his damn barbecue sauce. Just y'all and a plate of soon to be award winning barbecue. Award winning barbecue sauce, that is. It's fun to watch, even though it's it's ridiculous, ridiculous funny. What are your thoughts about it? I fucking hate this movie, dude. Are you kidding me? What? I'm throwing this shirt out after. So, I pulled this up last episode. Is this kind of why you were getting interested in this movie? Because you were like, oh, Robert Rodriguez, Grindhouse. Like I said, I was in between a couple of his movies, like uh, Planet Terror. I think I said something like Sin City or no, from Dust Till Dawn. Oh yeah, from Dust Till Dawn, which is also a good choice. When you gave me those two options, I was like, "Ooh, that's a tough one." I, I decided know. to do Planet Terror just because I had the DVD, and I was like, oh, "I want to watch it." So I actually have um, the DVD too. So I was like, "All right, let's let's." I'm gonna go with that because I thought I had from Dust Till Dawn on Blu-ray, but I, I didn't. I didn't. I actually own it. Um, some digital. I can't remember which one. So if we ever do that as a future episode. I do own that digitally. Anyways, I was joking. I don't hate this movie. I love this movie. I, I have a whole history with this movie. Uh, the first ever time we went to Spooky Empire was 10 years ago because he was pulling up the pictures to find out if it was still the same shirt. The whole yeah. reason I wanted to go that year, 2012, was because Rose McGowan was there. I wore yeah. my shirt. I told her, like, Grindhouse was the first ever R-rated movie I ever saw in <laughs> theaters. And she was like, badass. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that. Um, that, that gotcha that gotcha yeah. uh so yeah that it was i mean yeah so the first ever already movie i ever saw in theaters was grindhouse i was a senior in high school uh this came out in like april i remember i just got back from uh easter vacation or spring break whatever mm -hmm. you whoever's mm -hmm. watching refers to it as and that right. was like a big moment in my life as far as really wanting to get interested in film because that senior trip where we went we stayed at uh disney the disney area I spent a lot of time at uh, MGM Studios, now Hollywood Studios, Disney mm -hmm. Hollywood Studios, where I went on like the Backlot Tour and did the stunt show and all that stuff. I was like, I was already interested in film, but this was really getting me into it. And then the first movie I see when I get back home, Grindhouse, which just really <laughs> made me feel like, mm, I want to do this. And I never told you this, but I actually wrote my own knockoff of Grindhouse and it was it's called Slaughterhouse. <laughs> So okay, I saw this movie twice when it initially came out. Sadly, mm -hmm. I don't think most people saw it once. This movie actually bombed pretty hard. It wasn't a huge. This movie, I mean, it's yeah. over three hours long. I don't think people got it honestly. Like, I don't think people understood what they were doing. But I think fifteen years later, actually no, seventeen years later, actually, holy shit, this movie came out seventeen years to the date. It was April oh, something of really? twenty two thousand seven. So this oh. just hit its 17 year anniversary. Oh. So good timing to watch Grindhouse. House. Oh, yeah, that was good. Really good timing. Nice. Yeah. nice. So I saw this movie. I real I just fell in love with it. I took I it was one of those movies where I was like, I took my buddy. I was like, dude, we gotta go see this movie. I just saw it. I loved it. I saw it the first time by myself. I was just a like mm -hmm. 17 year old kid sitting in the theater. 
watching this, I'm like, I, I felt like I was watching porn because I was just not used to that kind of like stuff, like the nudity, the violent. I mean, the violence in this movie is insane. Oh yeah, the nudity, the graphicness of the tr- you know in the I mean, trailers. Even, even the nudity is not as much as like the vile compared to the violence and gore. Well, when you're a 17 year old kid like me sitting in a movie theater <laughs> who's never seen boobies on screen to see. <laughs> The first thing you see is the machete trailer, and you see this shot where it's actually JT playing the president in the machete trailer. Like, oh, Where, yeah. where's my wife and daughter? They and it's the, the waterfall scene. under the yep. waterfall with the, with the with the mom and the daughter. So, uh, this movie has so much going. I mean, this movie was a bomb at the time, but it's become so successful that not only have one of the movie trailers been turned into a spinoff, two of them got their own now with Thanksgiving coming out last year. That's right. That's right. Maybe we'll see Werewolf Women of the SS at some point. I'd love to see that. that and then Edgar crazy. Wright's Don't as well. Um, but by the way, if anybody has the Blu-ray, watch the special features. I was watching mm-hmm. it um, last week. It's actually really cool. Not only is that that Robert Rodriguez 10 Minute Film School in right, here, right. but there's also behind the scenes makings of every single trailer. It's actually really cool. So they oh, do each trailer, okay. but they like show behind the scenes. And yeah, it's actually, it's really cool. So I, yeah, man. I mean, I saw this movie, uh, they did a re-release at the New Bev, which is Quentin Tarantino's theater, back in like mm-hmm. 2019. They did a midnight showing. I went and I saw it, and I was like, "All right, I'll stay for like maybe the first movie." Stayed for the whole thing. I was there till like 3:30 in the morning. Oh, damn! Um, but I had so much fun with it, man. Um, we were at Spooky Empire last year. A lot of the cast was actually there because Rose McGowan was there again. Mm-hmm. Freddie Rodriguez was there. Marley Shelton was there, who plays the um. Josh Brolin's wife in this. Okay. Um, and it was just cool. Like Freddie Rodriguez, man, he just looks just as good as he does in this movie, like 17 years later. Um, this is one of my favorite Robert Rodriguez movies. I watch this probably at least once a year. Um, mm. not as big on death proof, although I've over the years really come to accept it. And the reason why is because when you watch this movie in theaters, I always thought they should have started with death proof. And because that's the both. slower-ish movie and then it stops is, with yeah. Planet Terror, but it's fine, you know. Uh, I, over the years, have really come to like Death Proof a lot more than I did back then, but Planet Terror is still my absolute favorite of, it, of the I, two. I was kind of like the opposite. Like, I really, really liked Death Proof. And I was, uh, if it was Grindhouse was presented to me, I would pick Death Proof first and then Planet Terror. Mm-hmm. And I'm like that. Maybe that's why I don't really remember Planet Terror that much. Mm. Like Death Proof, I remember the whole thing. You know? Yeah, but uh, I, I just forgot how violent it is, and I love it. I love the violence for it, and you know all the gross scenes, especially with Tarantino's scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I used to have that action figure. I don't know what I did with it. I used to have the Quentin Tarantino in this movie action figure. Um, the I, gas I, and everything. Yeah, he had the mask and everything. He had two heads. One was the normal head, and then one was the one with the the gun thing or whatever in his eye or whatever happens to him. Oh, the the so, needle, or the needle. Yeah. So you could interchange the heads, and I don't know what I did with it. It's I, I don't know if I lost it. It's somewhere uh, actually. So that I, would used to, be I used cool to have the action have. figure. So that would um, be cool yeah, I I love Planet Terror, man. The violence in this movie is just absolutely insane. Back when they would just do, I mean, this movie's so over the top and you just oh, can't yeah. help but laugh. I think of the scene where they're at the police station and he's like, um, all right, but I'm driving. He turns around, it's Michael Bean. The car just explodes for no reason. He turns back. Taking my car. I'm riding with you. Yeah, man, That's Michael crazy. Bean as the sheriff, Josh Brolin as the doctor. Or even uh, um, Tom Savini cracks me up. Tom Savini. Then, like, his wedding finger chopped off, pretty bitten off. And Did you notice who the other him. sheriff is? The guy that plays the other sheriff? He doesn't have a ton of lines. That's uh, know, the main lead in El Mariachi. Oh! Oh, damn. I did not think... I did not... Yeah. That's and then... This movie actually has some very small Easter eggs that relate to Death Proof. I don't know if you noticed, but in the beginning, Marley Shelton, or not Marley, um, Fergie, the singer Fergie, yeah, she her car breaks down, right, and you hear somebody on the radio saying, "And uh, you know, our respects to the late Jungle Julia." Oh, you know that? Yeah. I did and not I pay attention to that. There might even be a billboard at one point, but she, you definitely okay. hear that on the radio. So, the, obviously, the scenes of Death Proof. 
right. take place before Planet before Terror. Planet Terror, yeah. I did not pick that up. Wow. Yeah. So it's okay. cool. A little, uh, and then okay. there's a scene in Death Proof where Marley Shelton's in um, the hospital when Kurt Russell's in the hospital. You see Marley mm -hmm. Shelton and her dad. Um, so they're supposed to be connected somehow. Okay. 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 I did not see those in uh, Easter eggs at all. I did not pay attention. But I forgot how many, not just the the scenes that you don't expect to happen, like uh, when they're going down the road in the, 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 the truck and everything, and the dog jumps out and dies. I know. Uh, that's the one thing I yeah. never get over. Why did I R.I.P. R.I.P. What was his name? Rusty? Yeah, the dog could have lived and he could have been on the beach at the end. He could have been part of the part of the team. Yeah. But I think it just goes back to that exploited exploitative manner that this movie's supposed to be back to the the the, the literally grindhouse days of the 70s where movies were just over the top with sex and violence. Uh, the, I, yeah. I mean, this one didn't really have anything, proof. not really. Not this one no, but Death Proof definitely. Um yeah. But this movie definitely is the the violent one, while Death Proof is more of like the It's more dramatic. Yeah, it's slower. Um, but when that movie's violent, it's violent. Oh. Oh yeah. But that's always been a Tarantino thing. He's always been good at building the tension before everything just always have to have feet. Rub that too. Robert Rodriguez is just like just go crazy. And oh, um, yeah. it's funny, I, I worked on a show in Texas in Austin with a guy who worked on both movies. Uh, Damn. And I asked him about it because I was such a huge fan. His name was, uh, his nickname was Bull. Uh, his real name was Raul, but his name was Bull. He's the coolest guy. He was like a grip kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Worked all over Texas on all great, all these great movies. So I asked him, I was like, you know, what's the difference between Tarantino and Rodriguez? And he's like, Quentin is very expressive, very vocal. He uses the yeah. example of the scene in Death Proof where she gives the lap dance uh -huh. and she's supposed to be dancing with the jukebox. And he goes, you know, you gotta, you gotta want to fuck it. So he uses like that. So like, <laughs> that's how Tarantino, but Rob, Robert Rodriguez was more reserved, a little bit quieter, uh, yeah. a little bit more laid back. So it was just cool yeah. to see like the two differences between the two. Right, Some great right. cast of characters. We do got JT and his brother JT uh, played brother. by Michael Bean. Um, fun mm -hmm. fact, the guy that plays JT, um, he is from the Buffalo area. So oh, he's, uh, nice. he's a local. Nice. I'm trying to think of his name off the top of my head. He was in Elite Battle Angel. I can't remember his uh, character. Uh, Jeff Fahey. That's that's his name. So Jeff yeah. Fahey. Bruce Willis is in this movie. Right, right. Um I, I going, what makes you think he's you forget that he's in the movie. I was actually just reading something like two seconds before and uh, fun little trivia. The appearance of Bruce Willis in a minor role is a subtle nod to an old marketing trick often employed by grindhouse makers. They would contract a big name movie star to appear in their movie for one day for a few <laughs> shots while the rest of the scenes were done with a double film from the background. So I think that uh, is what they were going for. Although that kind of became Bruce Willis's career for like the last five years before he stopped, he would just show up in these like, yeah. Bargain bin movies where you know he was there for like a day or something. So I mean, this hopefully this wasn't a prelude now. to that. We know why. Well, I think it was more for the money, if anything. Sure, I mean, you, the can, end, sure. you can you can blame his um health, but I think even before they officially knew he was doing a lot of these movies. True, it would just pop up and I'm like, the hell is this movie? Yeah. But I, I don't mind like and... his character in in the Planet Terror though. It's the whole hero soldier turned bad, trying to still protect his own people. It was like, all right, all right, yeah. The the scientist, the the guy with the ball, wanted the ball. Everyone was balls. I was like, mm -hmm. shit. I also want your balls. That's what no. That's when you know what kind of movie you're in for. And he's like, I want you. I want his balls. Your balls. And then his head just gets split apart. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. The the kid that plays um Marley Shelton, the Doc Block's uh son, mm -hmm. ends up shooting himself in the face. Is Robert Rodriguez' right. the actual son who right, right, yeah. we'll see in Rebel without a crew the crew. film series that we that we're watching he hasn't really shown up yet he's that's not that son that you've seen it's his other son who's actually in red 11 uh you'll see just how much older he is uh 
which which one what is it racer no yeah Re no rebel racer is the one that we've seen in rebel without a crew that's actually helping them film okay rebel so rebel is the one in in, in Re Palantir. rebel's the one that makes the knives they introduced that in the one episode oh the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's the kid in this movie that shoots himself in the face oh yeah that yeah. part is like damn and you know it's coming too as soon as she's walking away from the car like yeah where where is it where is it like yep there it is <laughs> they just had to get rid of the the kids and dogs man the two things you can't work with they said he said let's just get rid of that yep. and actually they actually filmed scenes of him at the beach at the end like he as if he lives oh and they actually filmed see yeah it's in the behind the scenes so they actually filmed stuff of him making it throughout the whole movie and then i guess robert Rodriguez just decided at some point eh, let's just kill him off it's okay <laughs> maybe it just became too too many characters who knows but rose mcgowan's yeah. great in this movie she's very funny um she has a lot of great little quirks to her with her wanting to be a stand-up comedian um and she looks she's a badass man she's really a badass. especially towards the end with the i i love the shot where she's like flying through the air with the grenade like She's a badass man. Now, now you understand why I wanted to meet her in person. Yeah. I and, and you know what was funny? I I kept saying like, yeah, she just got a uh, a gun fitted for her her uh, uh, leg, right? The gun that never runs out of ammo. Yeah, man. I mean, how how is she even shooting the gun? Doesn't matter. It, it, that too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> There's just things in this oh. movie that don't make sense, and who cares? Because you're just having a fun time, man. Like, uh, you got the crazy babys babysitter twins as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, even like El Rey. I was like, who? <laughs> Who's he supposed to be? Oh, no, he's just supposed to be an original character who's got this mysterious backstory. I think that's like another play into these movies from back in the day. It's like this character that's got the mysterious backstory. and That's never you know. explained. Exactly. Well, even this movie <laughs> has fun with its editing where it's like there's the love scene, but then it, it says missing oh, yeah. real. Missing real. And, like, and then it cuts the to like this chaos of just like <laughs> yeah. fire and Michael Bean's like bleeding from the throat. And it's just like, what just happened? But that's the joke <laughs> of like watching a movie in the 70s like this at like a movie theater. And like literally it's so low budget that the production company or studio that made it forgot to send one of the reels. But all of a sudden you're just watching a movie and it's 20 minutes later. So it's just like so much fun <laughs> stuff there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, even the burning of the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did a lot of um, really cool things. Like there's, like again, going back to the last episode about Robert Rodriguez, where it's just like mm -hmm. little things. There's a scene where um, it's in the beginning, it's Josh Brolin and the other doctor talking to the mm -hmm. guy that got bit, right? And oh, yeah. We got to cut off the arm, Joe. Right. And if you look carefully, Josh Brolin does this thing where he goes, and when he does that, the film, the film jumps and it cuts. So if you watch that scene carefully, oh. it goes like this. It actually cuts to a quick, a dunder shot, and the film does a jump at the same time. It's just like quick, cool little things like that he does. You know? Yeah, I didn't pay attention to that. Okay, okay. It, you should watch the behind the scenes for this. I think you could probably find it on YouTube as well. Um, it's really probably cool I have to stuff. find it there, yeah. Because I, I have a burned copy of Planet Terror, so it's not the whole thing. It's just the movie uh, itself. Gotcha, gotcha. But, uh, no, it... it I loved every minute of it. I mean, I forgot how long it was, but <laughs> That's an hour and a half ish. It felt a longer. Bit. It felt longer than that. I don't know why. Maybe it's the the parts when there's no action. It felt long. The TV review that we're doing in mm -hmm. between that, I was gonna do all the Robert Rodriguez films, like just pick up at random, mm -hmm. do all that, but, and I started with this. I mean, my original thought was going to be El Mariachi, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So, I mean, Grindhouse. Can't go wrong, go wrong with it. man. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Or Planet mm -hmm. Terror specifically. Yeah. <laughs> can't go wrong. It's yeah. just, I mean, I'll never get sick of this movie. Grindhouse in general. It's just, it's such an important movie. It's as weird as it sounds. It's a, it was such an important movie in my life for wanting mm -hmm. to get into film. Be, again, being a 17 year old senior in high school who was 
quite still on the fence about what he wanted to do. Knew I had an interest in film at the time, but then again, from that Disney trip to coming mm -hmm. home and what Grindhouse was the first movie in theaters when I came home, just like stuff like that was, was yeah. very important to me. So, um, yeah, this movie will always have a special place in my heart. You know, as a kid, I always mixed them up, those two movies, because I, I remember seeing it, seeing them on cable, and uh, it was a double feature. Mm -hmm. But I. I I guess I always missed the title of them, so I always m mixed them up. And I said, "It's Grindhouse, but which one's which?" I was like, "It's just Grindhouse to me." So I ended up like mixing them both in between. Some scenes from Planetary. Oh no, that's in Death Proof. No, 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 that's only Death Proof. Mm -hmm. No, that's only Planetary. So as a kid, I just mixed them up. And then, of course, years later, that's when I was figuring out, like, "Oh, it's two movies, not just one." Okay, now I get it. <laughs> I mean, come on, Chris. It literally <laughs> says it's a Rodriguez Tarantino double feature. I know, I know, but I, I mixed them all into one movie. <laughs> I mean, they technically are one movie if you just call it Grindhouse. That's kind of the funny thing. It's like on IMDb, Grindhouse has its own page, but then Planet Terror has its own. Double, Death Proof has its own. Yeah, I know. Well, we'll do <laughs> Death Proof at some point. Yeah, I don't mind doing Death Proof. That's a fun one. Yeah. All in all, I mean, a classic Rodriguez film of explosions and nudity and gore and everyone kills each other. Good time. <laughs> now, come on, Chris. It's called Go Go, not Cry Cry. By the way, the guy that played Skip was Robert Rodriguez's real estate agent. <laughs> He's like a realtor in real life. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Here's this and... No. Uh... As in the double feature of this tag team, Chris and I, we are about to wrap this up. We'd like to thank everybody for watching. If uh, you enjoyed this, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date for some future episodes. We will be getting back to the Robert Rodriguez Film School starting on our next episode. And then um, we've got some exciting stuff coming up. Uh, the week after that, we have our first paid episode. Someone donated. Thank you, Johnny. Johnny, who's actually been on the show before in the last few episodes. So, yeah, Johnny, appreciate star. the donation. We'll be doing Sucker Punch. So we actually have our lineup kind of set for the next few weeks. So next week, we'll be going yeah. back to uh, the Robert Rodriguez Film School. We'll be doing episodes four through six. After that, we'll be doing Sucker Punch. The week after that, we'll be doing Red Eleven, the feature film that's based on the uh, show that we've been watching. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Cut print moving on. See, Chris, when we go to Spooky Empire this year, I'll dress up as El Rey. You can dress up as Cherry Darling. Get there. It's... <laughs>